Shane Mincer is the Chief Talent Officer and he's here to teach us how much toughness is actually appropriate in the workplace. Good to have you back with us, Shane. Thank you, Thanks Karen. for being here today. Now, um, one of the things that I talked about in, in my open was the fact that likely, statistics say anyway, that the person we most recently complimented mm -hmm. was someone that we're not that close to, someone where it doesn't really matter, it's not going to have any real strong effect. Um, the person we most likely just really reamed is somebody that it probably does really matter that it did hurt the relationship. Um, but you say that in in the workplace, that empty praise mm -hmm. doesn't really have a place either. No, it doesn't. I think being truthful and honest, if it's to your employer or to someone you work with or even someone that reports to you, I, I've always go back to the golden rule. How would you want people to treat you? Mm -hmm. And not only, as we discussed in the first segment, um, within families, uh, we generally hurt the, the people that, that are closest to us. Right. Well, you do get close in the workplace. Um, tough love in the workforce, I would say, is more of an oxymoron. We've used it in, in, in the uh, sense of families, and we understand it with our kids uh -huh. um, or with our you know, family members. But in the workforce, I don't want to say that it doesn't exist, tough love, uh -huh. in the sense of how we know it there. But there are things that, that need to be measured within the workplace, and one of that is your behavior, how you deal with people, your communication skills. You can put people off. If you're not humble, you're prideful, and you're really obstinate, and, and your boss says you need to do this, and you don't do it, and there's a deadline on it, and it doesn't get done, mm -hmm. you're going to get fired. That's right. And those That's are the right. realities and the consequences of in the work workplace. And people that are talented that excel, generally the people that I'm I'm going after, I'm trying to recruit for my clients, they have the talent, the skills that have grown so that they can be leaders, mm. successful leaders. Right, but I think one of the things that, that employers think is, you know, if I, if I have a new employee, I should set my expectations though, because we, we intrinsically, we don't want to be disappointed, but you say that's the wrong approach. You should actually set your expectations high. Oh, definitely, because if you set your uh, expectations low, then their performance is going to be low. If the work itself is not going to be quality work. It's good for them to fail. In, in the sense that you, you can set a high goal and they're going to shoot for more excellence. It's with anything in all of our lives. Um, there's a lot of uh, studies that have been shown even at the turn of the century uh, that, um, that when you're in groups, even in, in, the, uh, in, in group dynamics within, um, well, any group dynamics with the Olympics or whatnot, when you're together in a team, mm -hmm. you excel and you do better. If okay, you're together, mm -hmm. yeah, if you're alone and you're isolated, a lot of the times your, your skills might get a little dull. Yeah. And now not everyone's gonna be doing a certain type of work. Like an engineer might be doing something different than an operations manager. So all of us has different skills, but we all excel and we all need to learn how to communicate with one another. And I think that gets back to how do you deal with conflict? Because you need to learn how to receive it and you also need to learn how to give it and as a boss, even with your kids, but with, as a boss to an employee, mm -hmm. you do want to set a high expectation for but them. But you say the key to setting those high expectations and not feeling too much disappointment is, is establishing smaller goals along the way. It's so there's, there's the ultimate goal, and you want to have a very nice high expectation there, but you need to set those milestones along the way so that that employee's not completely overwhelmed how to get from here to there because they can see here, 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 exactly. all the way up. And then it gives you opportunity to acknowledge that. And this goes really not just with employers, employee relationships, but child and parent relationships as well, correct? Correct, yes. yes. Excellent. Um, one of the things, one of my mentors is Lou Adler, and he started this, it's called performance-driven recruiting mm -hmm. in the sense that, that you want to measure someone's success in the performance. And I think that a lot of that can be done not just in the workplace, but at home with your kids, with their homeworks and their assignments and, and working towards those goals and having them understand that you have to break it down, Yes. the work down, that yeah. it's not going to, okay, the, it's deadline Friday, well, you need to start it now. You can't work, you know, and... But Thursday you know, we night. Really, we really don't <laughs> learn that in schools, though. If you think about it, you go back to school. You know, the teacher knows that the end goal is what you're going to have accomplished at the end of the year. But there's not a lot of there's not a lot of you know you're going to have mastered this. The first day of school, you come in. Your teacher doesn't really tell you you're going to have mastered these skills by the end of the year. The teacher just starts teaching you incrementally. So we don't really have a good model for this in our at least in our public school systems, and and frankly, in some ways, in our parenting. I'm not sure how many times I've said to my kids, "Look, the reason I want you to be 
100% honest and never withhold truth from me is because ultimately I want you to have a successful, healthy life and marriage and work relationships and that's going to depend on you being honest with people even when it's painful. You know, we need to be more careful, I think, in our daily lives to spell this out and in schools perhaps even to say, hey, we're teaching you things incrementally because ultimately we do want you to know the chemistry or we do want you to know the logic or, or those sorts of things. Don't you think that's important and sort of something that's missing that makes it hard to think incrementally? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think that there's a lot of things that come up in that uh, exactly hit it on the head. One of the things, too, in the workplace, though, is uh, when you're a manager, you have such influence upon people. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people are stressed about what their boss is going to think. Sure. So there's a lot of yeah. stress in how people perceive. Um, there are some really great managers out there, great leaders, or, um, but there are those that aren't. I, I, my first uh, business was a golf ball retrieving business for three, four years. I lived across the street from a golf course, and people would hit the balls the wrong way. And I love this because I share it now in life. There are a lot of good golfers and bad golfers that lose a lot of balls, and, but there are great golfers that hardly ever lose balls. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and just like working with teams now, I find people sometimes that are hit wrong by their boss, and so I, they come my way, and then, and then I get them on a winning team. Oh, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and that they excel and that the goal and passion That's in life, the goal and passion in life is to see those birdies, see those holes in one, to mm -hmm. see the, the, the straight shooters, to see the, the leaders that have passion for what they love to do. When we get out of school, we don't go to school and we don't go to school and, and to find out what's your passion, what do you really want to do? Mm -hmm. See, now there's a whole, and now we're starting to get it. Uh, there's so many people out there right now that in the marketplace, Deloitte did a study on this, 80% of the people right now are, uh, un they're just not happy in their careers. Why? Well, I think the goal of that is that they're not finding what they really love to do. So it does get back to milestones, getting back to how you treat people, and this whole process of discovery, yeah. it takes a Wait, lifetime, all right? All of this that you said makes me realize how totally engaged parents need to be in their children's lives um, in, in a mentoring position, you know, saying, hey, what are this person's, what are my child's real strengths and passions? Because I think too often we're asking, what are the good careers to go into today? Exactly. Well, that's nice, but if that's not your child's strength or passion, there's a problem right there, and your child's going to have an automatic disconnect with the work that now they've been trained and we've invested money and time in getting them into. And I think some of that goes to, I, it always shocks me how much of the world is largely unparented. I, I say that all the time. I use that with my, my daughters when they're making friends. They'll have a friend and they'll have a problem. I'll be like, That's, that person hasn't been parented there. The, the issue is that that child that wants to be your friend doesn't understand how to communicate that to you because no one's explained that. As employers, we can fill in some of those gaps, can't we? Absolutely. We can be the one who says to them, hey, look, yes, I want you to be here, but if you can get it right here, I'm going to give you a great big whop and thank you and maybe a box of candy or something. Yeah. You know, we can make the incentives so that so that, that employee who maybe never has been taught to, to live incrementally can do that then. Exactly. Yeah. Motivation goes so far when you encourage someone for a job well done and they say thank you and you say thank you. Thank you's important. Things that's absolutely, magical. absolutely critical. We'll be back in a moment with more Smart Life, talking about talking tough. Stay with us.